Today's thought for the day is this. You are the average combination of the five people that you hang out with the most. What does that mean? Now, that pretty much just means that whoever you're hanging out with the most on a day-to-day -day basis is going to inform who you are a bit. They're going to have an impact on you. Now, the question that you should ask yourself is this. The five people that you spend the most time with. Now, you got to ask yourself this. Are they adding value to your life and encouraging you and inspiring you to be the best version of you that you can be? Or are they putting you down and, and, and sucking the life out of you? Think about it. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a cold day outside, but it's a beautiful one. Happy Saturday, sun Sunday. It's Sunday today. How we doing? Today, I want to talk to you about this quote that you've probably heard before. Comparison is the thief of joy. Let's talk about it. In this day and age, it's really easy to compare ourselves to each other because we have things like Instagram where you can see how many people are following and liking and commenting and it makes it really challenging for us to not compare. So that's then where, shit, where this quote comes into play. Comparison is a thief of joy because as soon as you start trying to live vicariously through someone else's life, you forget to live your own. So this is why it's completely pointless to compare ourselves to someone else because there's only one you and only you can be you and you might as well be the best you you can be instead of looking at someone else's best version of themselves trying to be them. Just be you. So this is my challenge for you today. Can you go all day without comparing yourself to another? And if you do, can you be aware of it and catch yourself? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Afternoon. It's 12.50. I had a terribly busy morning of sleeping. All right, on to the thought of the day. So I don't know if you could read my chicken scratch handwriting um, <clears throat> on the window. I thought that was going to be way cooler. But the quote today, you cannot choose what happens to you. You can only choose how you react. So I can definitely see why some people could argue the other side that you totally can choose what happens to you because you're a manifesting machine and that's cool. But I'm talking about like big life circumstantial events that happen that you don't really have control over. All the way down to the little things that happen that um, you still don't have control over, like the behavior of someone else, you know what I mean? Um, and when you realize that you, you can't, you just got to... Uh, you just, you sort of, like... Sorry, apparently I'm having a tough time talking today. I haven't even had coffee yet. This is what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> All you can do is react to what's happening around you, and you can choose. It puts the power in you once you realize that... All you have to do, all you can do is react to the things that are happening around you. So, for example, if someone's driving down the street and you're driving too slow and they're honking and they're like, hey. So in that moment when you're confronted with tough situations, you have a choice to, to either feed the negative energy and give it right back to him. Or you can just smile and let it slide off because it's not that big of a deal. So I would say that this typically applies to most situations where... <clears throat> you always have a choice on, on how to react to the things around you. And you can choose to be, to react positively or negatively.
you decide. I hope some of that made sense. I know I wasn't terribly concise with my words today. Um, <clears throat> and I'm sorry about that. I was watching this Elon Musk, Joe Rogan podcast last night and it kept me up to like three. It was the most mind blowing thing. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a fine Wednesday. I cannot wait to do the thought of the day today. But first thing is first. Coffee. Got the coffee. We love Van. I do love Van. Man, it is beautiful outside. It's like sunny and clear. I'm wearing two layers and I was like comfortable. All right, let's make some coffee and talk about- Today's thought of the day is inspired by the book, The Four Agreements, written by Don Miguel Ruiz. Maybe some of you have read it, maybe you got- I loaned it to Ross or Jazz, I think, so this is where I would normally show it to you. Okay, because I know that Ross and Jazz are, are keeping it in good hands. The four agreements are as follows. Always do your best. Don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions and be impeccable with your word. Let's talk about it. So my plan is to kind of talk about each of these in depth a little bit for the next three days plus today. Um, and we're going to talk about just one of the agreements today. And it's going to be be impeccable with your word. If you want to follow along, get the book. This is actually like a tiny pet peeve of mine when someone says they're going to do something and then they don't follow through. And that's what being impeccable with your word means. If you're going to say out loud that you're going to do something, then do it. Another great aspect of this agreement is um, to only say what you mean. Don't don't flatter someone just for sheer flattery. It's inauthentic and it you like you can feel when someone's like, you're so pretty when they're full of sh Another part of this agreement is to never use your word to put the self down. Oh, I spilled coffee. Or to put anyone else down or gossip. It's a waste of time and it's bullshit. So don't do it. And listen, I'm not saying that I'm not guilty of this. I totally am. I've talked shit and I've done, you know what I mean? But like, you, you, as long as you're aware of it and you're working at it, like, that's the strides you gotta be making. When you're not wasting your energy talking about others, putting others down, putting yourself down, saying things you don't mean, and, and following through with what you're saying, then you're using your word in a direction that is towards truth and love. And that's what it's about. So now that my story is a mile long, uh, that, that was the uh, thought for the day. Be impeccable with your words. See if you can. Challenge yourself. If you like these guys, I'll keep them coming. If you don't, I'd swipe away. Good morning. It's Thursday in Vancouver. Can you believe it outside? This is December in Vancouver. I mean, it's cold, but it's like sunny and gorgeous. Last night I was watching Lord of the Rings Return of the King because it's one of my favorite films. I'm a huge Lord of the Rings uh, nerd. And um, God, it's so good. And Miranda Otto in it is just so... I am no man. I am no man. Oh, it's just so cool. Miranda Otto and Dom, I particularly loved your performances together. Your on-screen chemistry was lovely, as well as with Viggo Mortensen, who plays Aragorn. Anyways, that's enough about Lord of the Rings. On to the thought of the... D so we're still keeping in tune with the four agreements, and we're on to the second one today, which is... Don't take anything personally. Let's talk about it. I also was told by a really great mentor figure of mine named Michael Leone, who you would say, uh, you must allow 50% of the people to hate your work and the other 50 to like your work. And if you're okay with that statistic, 
you're golden. This is an agreement that I cannot stress enough. Uh, I like, especially as a young actor who's in LA auditioning a bunch, taking things personally, it is like the, the thing that will slow you down the most. I think it was Jim Carrey also who said, um, when you, when you stop caring what other people think, it makes you dangerously powerful. Now, I don't think he means like evil powerful, but often when other people are like saying stuff to you, it, 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 it's more often than not, it's, it's a projection of whatever's happening within them. It's hardly ever about you. So if someone's taking their anger out on you, it's because they got anger in them. And what they're looking for is to evoke some sort of emotional response from you. They want you to get upset by their, by their, oh, my mom just texted me, guys. Um, they're looking to make you mad or sad or, or whatever. They just kind of like, they want to make you feel less than you are sometimes. And, and when you are immune to that, to other people's projections, then you go so much further, so much faster. And now these, these people who are trying to like, you know, put you down or whatever, or make you feel less than you are, it's, they're not bad people or anything. Like you just send them love, but know that you don't need to take it personally. And when it no longer bothers you, when people say you're too this, you're too that, you're not enough this, you're not enough that, you take away the suffering that you would feel as a victim of their world and it puts the power back in you to live your life fully to you. So that's the second agreement. Don't take anything personally. See if you can. See if you do take things personally. And then just stop. It's not that simple. But work on it. It's a good thing to work on. Cheers, you guys. Good morning. Good morning, happy Friday, everybody. Cheers. That's hot. Today we're talking about the third agreement. Always do your best. Here, the sun is coming up right now though, and it's just, hang on. I love watching the city come to life. It's just gorgeous out there. All right, always do your best though. When you have a task at hand, do you do a half ass job at it? Um, say you have to do the dishes, you know? Are you gonna do those dishes? Because here's the thing, it may not seem like that big of a deal. They're just dishes, right? But how you do those dishes is going to translate how you take care of the other aspects in your life. If you do a really good job at everything, and an aspect to this agreement is also that your best changes. Like, it's not always like, you know, if you do 40 push-ups today in a row, tomorrow you might do 50 or you might do 20, you know? That was just like a really simple way to show that, you know, um, so long as you're putting your best self forward, uh, you'll avoid things like regret and doubt and self-judgment. But it is crazy, like I can't begin to explain. When you, <clears throat> as soon as you start like being cognizant of whether you're putting your best efforts forward or not, you'll see so much start to change when you start doing your best. Even if you have a job that you absolutely hate, like I worked in a restaurant for a long time and I, I, I hated working in restaurants, but I put my best effort in and I felt so much more joy doing it. And simply from honoring this agreement of always doing my best, it translated from that restaurant to what I'm doing now, which is something that I love. And I feel like I wouldn't have gotten here if I just was like half-assing it the whole way. Alrighty then, that's enough talking. It's time to get to work. I'm getting picked up in four minutes. Um, happy Friday, everyone. Always do your best.
a lot of you guys asked how this coffee is. The We Love Van Coffee. They're locally made and they donate a portion to care for the homeless. I will do a comprehensive review of the coffee now. To be completely honest, I'm no uh, coffee connoisseur. I probably couldn't tell you good coffee from bad coffee. I love coffee. My review is this. This? It's coffee. You know when you say something long enough and it just starts sounding funny? Coffee. Coffee. Coffee is just like a funny word. 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 I guess it works with everything. We're on to the fourth agreement today. Um, what's the fourth one? So what have we learned so far? Always do your best. Be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions. Making assumptions is like one of the uh, uh, worst things you can do. No, there's definitely worser things that you can do. But making assumptions is um, ill-advised. Communication becomes so confusing and, and problematic with people when we make assumptions about the other. Instead of, instead of assuming that someone's feeling shitty, we should ask them, how are you feeling? This agreement is, is like so powerful too. It's so transformative because you, you relearn like how to be curious in a way that's inquisitive instead of assumptive. The word I was looking for was assumptive. I found it in the cupboard. Um, you become inquisitive instead of assumptive. Like you, you, I think that's the word. You ask people questions in, instead of assuming. You guys might have heard the, uh, the expression, when you assume it makes sense out of you and me, because um, of the way it's spelled. I just assumed that the word assumptive was a word and used it. It could have made it out of me, but... Often when we make assumptions, <clears throat> we misunderstand or misinterpret what the other person is thinking or feeling, and that leads us to get confused, and then we feel crappy about them, and then they feel the worst. You know, and we, we just assume how, how the other is doing it instead of asking a question. When you ask a question, you're gauging the other person and communicating. So much drama and sadness is rooted in making assumptions and also taking things personally. The two agreements are so ah, intrinsically linked um, and so much of those negative feelings are rooted in Gossip is the form of communication that exists in the hell that we're creating. And gossip is built upon taking things personally and making assumptions about other people. If you don't want to create that hell, stop doing those things. Man, the superpowers of this thing. I, you know, coffee is a drug, you guys. Like, I felt it totally kick in in that last shot. So in closing, if you want to uh, get rid of some of the toxicity in your brain, then don't make assumptions about other people. Um, ask questions instead. Now this will encourage you to um, be more bold with your word and, uh, um, and will inspire genuine curiosity as opposed to just taking the easy route and assuming you know everything. And those are the four agreements, ladies and gentlemen. They're good little nuggets of wisdom, aren't they? Reading that book was like life-changing for me. They're hard, but I practice them daily.